Welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to create our first sketch. First, I wanted to take a minute to talk about what's different between Inventor Fusion and other CAD software. So CAD, as you may or may not know, stands for Computer Aided Design. If you're familiar with programs like Autodesk Inventor, SolidWorks, Dassault's Katia, or uh, Creo, the former pro engineer, you'll know that these are parasolid-based solid modelers. They use what's called a feature-based approach to create solids, models, and assemblies. First, you create features like extrusions, rotations, sweeps, fillets, holes, etc., and then you piece all these together to end up with your final model. If you're new to all this, or if you're coming from AutoCAD, you may not know what parametric modeling is, so let me just take a sec to cover that. Parametric modeling uses parameters to determine the shape and size of your geometry. There's two types of parameters. One is constraints, and the other is dimensions. A constraint refers to the relationships between your geometric entities. For example, the four sides of a square have an equal relationship. In Autodesk, these relationships are called constraints. In SolidWorks, they're called relations. Dimensions refer to the size of your entities, the length of a rectangle, the radius of a fillet, etc. So in a nutshell, you use parameters to determine the shape and size of your geometry. Let's take a look at an example from Fusion's big sister. Her name is Inventor. Let's right-click on the XY plane, select New Sketch. And let's create a simple rectangle. Go to the Draw panel, activate the Rectangle tool, and let's drop it about here, something like this. Now let's apply some dimensions. Let's say 50 millimeters, accept by 10 millimeters, and accept. Let's exit our sketch. And now let's create an extrusion. I'll accept the default value of 10 millimeters in depth for this extrusion. And here the design tree shows us our first feature, extrusion one. Here's sketch one, let's make it visible. Right click, visible. This is the basis for extrusion one. You see from the way that it's nested within extrusion one that it's linked to extrusion one. So in other words, if I change a dimension on my sketch, I'm going to change the extrusion. Let's change this dimension to 60, okay. And as you see, the solid has followed suit. I can also edit my extrusion directly. Let's double click on it. Make the depth 20 millimeters instead of 10. OK. And my extrusion depth updates. So this is an example of history based parametric solid modeling. Inventor Fusion works a little bit differently. It's a history free direct modeler. So let's just demonstrate so you can understand what all these big words mean. Let's see how we can make a similar entity in the Fusion environment, and this will make it all clear for you. Let's begin by activating the Rectangle tool. By the way, you'll notice that the Fusion interface is pretty similar to that of Inventor. OK, let's create a rectangle. OK, let's activate the Extrude command now. Make it 10 millimeters. Click OK. Let's take a look at the browser just to see how it's structured. Here's the node for the extrude, but the sketch is in a different folder. So they're completely independent entities. In other words, the solid and the sketch, they're not linked together. There's a useful aspect to that. I can easily reuse that sketch. For example, I wouldn't have to create another sketch if I, let's say, wanted to create a second 10 millimeter extrusion. Let's try it out. Let's change this option to Join instead of Cut, and click OK. What's also convenient is that I can delete the sketch, and it doesn't have any impact on my model. It won't affect it at all. In Inventor Fusion, we modify our geometry directly. In other words, to change a dimension, I don't have to go back to a supporting sketch or to a tool property manager. I just do my work in the graphic area. I press down this face and then drag it in and out and click OK. As you see, only the geometry I selected was affected. For example, let's select this edge and drag it, and click Accept. And let me select this edge now and pull it, and click OK. So now we've established that Inventor Fusion is history free, and this means that the sketch and the model are not linked together. 
It's also a direct modeler, meaning you make your changes right in the graphic area. You might be wondering which one's better. Well, it's like asking if a hammer or sledgehammer is better. It really depends on the job you're doing. You might be wondering which program to use, Inventor, Inventor Fusion, or AutoCAD. It really depends on the job that you're trying to accomplish. In other words, it's just one more tool in the designer and the engineer's arsenal. Inventor has many more tools and capabilities, so if you're planning to work with larger moving assemblies, you need to stick with Inventor. What's cool about Fusion is that you can import files from other CAD software without their history and then modify them directly without having to figure out how to make the import convert correctly. Having said all this, let's get back to our sketch and figure out how to use Inventor Fusion. All right, let's begin by creating a new sketch. I've got Snap Mode active. I'm going to click the Draw tool. Let's place my first point and a second point. Third point, and let's close my profile. Notice that once I closed the profile, Inventor Fusion recognized it and the profile became shaded. To exit drawing mode, you need to do what's called exit the sketch. In Fusion, you do this with a right click and select stop sketch. Let's take a look at the browser. Here's my sketch folder and here's sketch one inside it. Now if sketch one is still visible and I start drawing on the same plane, Inventor Fusion is going to add all that geometry to sketch one. Let's try that out. Let's create another triangle, second point, third point and close the profile. So now sketch one consists of these two closed profiles. To exit the sketch, you can right click and select stop sketch, or you can hover your mouse over this glyph down here and click stop sketch. Let's hide sketch one, turn the light bulb off. Now activate the draw tool, select a plane and notice that sketch two is now created for me. Let's begin drawing. And let me close the profile. And here is sketch two. This concludes our first tutorial about sketching in Inventor. In our next several tutorials, I'll be showing you how to use Fusion's drawing tools.